beautiful, fun project box. Let's see how it works. Open it up and look at that. All that fun, all these fun interactive pieces. The gift cards, you could put any, you can make another sheet or more multiple sheets with pockets and slide in like a bracelet. Um, cold hard cash works too. <laughs> um, whatever you want to give, a little note, a little, you know, you could put a small gift in here. I like the candies. You could put thin candies in pockets if you wanted to or under the flaps as well. You have multiple things. This is the We Are Memory Keepers Explosion Board Tool. With this, with this one tool, you can make several sizes of boxes. These would be boxes with a lid that you can use as little gift boxes. But you can also create what is called an explosion box. And that's going to be, um, it will appear as a box. And when you lift the lid, all these little layers will pop open. You'll have places for tags and pockets for gifts. You can even put a small box on the inside. And that's what we're going to do today. So you also are gonna need some paper. I like to use collection kits because then you get lots of variety of designs and you know everything in this one set is all gonna coordinate. And you get a set of stickers too and that's just gonna be fun to decorate at the end. You'll also need some score tape. We like to use a really strong holding of adhesive and so score tape is what I would recommend. And um, in addition to your paper, your good, your good glue and your board, a couple of initial supplies you're gonna need, a pair of scissors, any kind, uh, a ruler is gonna be very helpful, a pencil. Uh, you're definitely gonna need a paper trimmer because we need to trim the paper to size, any kind of paper trimmer. And then this is optional because you can do this with scissors, but um, it will make quick work of the project if you have some sort of an exacto knife or a craft knife. I actually like this one by Fiskars because you can just slide it on your finger and you just like a ring and then wherever you point it cuts, but the blade is the same as like an exacto. So one of those would be great. And then if you're gonna use an exacto knife, you're gonna need a mat that you can cut on like a self healing mat and, and or <laughs> the glass mat. I'm gonna use my glass mat because this blade is not a steel blade. This glass mat will be perfect for that. Uh, and then finally, whatever goodies you want to put in the box. Um, like I've got a little bit, a few little bit candies, maybe some gift cards, um, small trinkets, photos, memorabilia, um, a little letter, a little note, small gifts like bracelets or earrings were nice. <laughs> it's a fun, it's a fun um, way to give money. So let's get started and um, create an explosion board box. I think I'm going to do the winter. So I'll get this Christmas paper out of the way. And we'll just open everything up. Now hang on to these instructions as you might want to refer to them. Don't be intimidated. There's a lot of information, but remember that some of it is in another language. And it also just gives you hints and ideas on other kinds of things you can make, including these really cool cards that open differently. They call them those a squash card. So this one tool can do a lot. Okay, with, let's look at the tool itself. To the back is taped these little heart templates. So we'll get the tape off of those. These are an optional use for this tool and they allow you to have heart-shaped or petal-shaped corners on some of your inside pieces if you want. And it is on your tool with a jump ring and that's just handy so you don't lose it, but we can take it off while we are using it. And each of these has a label. There's extra, extra small, extra small, small, medium, large, uh, extra large, and extra, extra large. And those all coordinate with these size boxes. See, it's the same set of sizes that you can choose to use. We will definitely use this at least once, so you'll see how to use it. The other part of this tool is right down here, there's a little hidey hole for it. This little guy is your bone folder. And we're gonna use that for all of our projects. It's just nice it has a place to keep it so you don't lose it. Okay, well, let's get started. We're gonna start by making the outside box. So I wanna look through these papers. And what I wanna do is sort of sort them out. What I need are papers that have an overall pattern that is not directional. 
ideally. It's okay if it is directional, but ideally, the majority of the papers you choose will not. So this, this side of this paper is great for that. Let's look at the other side. This side too. This side, because you can look at it from any direction, and it looks good in any direction. So this is a, this is a solid paper we will definitely want to set this aside as a keyword that we will probably use. Now this is a cut apart paper, and we could, this is not going to be great choice for the actual structure of the box. However, all these cute little cutouts would be great for tucking into pockets and sleeves. Backside would work for either way, but just know most of the layers you're going to be seeing the front and the back. So this one I'm going to actually set aside as not to use as a base layer. Okay, ooh, I love this one. This one works on this side and it works on this side. Perfect. So I'm going to put that in that pile. And this one also works great on both. Okay, we have another cut apart, so that's going to go to the other side. But let's just look at the back. That's cute. Okay, put that over there on that side. Dark field of snowflakes and plain white. That's going to work. Now this one is slightly directional in that none of the hats are upside down. But it's scattery enough <laughs> that I think this will work fine. So I'm going to put that in this pile. I'm going to put the cut apart in the other pile. Oh, this plaid is gorgeous. Oh, and look at the wood. That's going to be a nice contrast. I definitely like that one. That's going to work for our surface. Okay, so this one is definitely directional. See how my little cups is? They would look a little bit odd if we had them upside down, but it's not the end of the world, especially if you choose to make this a cocoa themed project. You know what? A cocoa bomb would fit perfectly in the middle of this, of this box. Um, so this is a maybe for me. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the side though. Another cut apart. We will move that to the other side, although I do like this a lot. That side's quite pretty. Um, snow globes, same, similar situation as the cups, but even, but I think it makes less sense to have it go, you know, in other directions. So I'm going to go ahead and put that over here to this pile. And then our last sheet should be our stickers. Yeah. So we'll set that aside that we'll use all of these, or well, some of these stickers and some of these cut aparts to decorate with, okay? So we'll set those aside, get them out of our way for now. And these are the papers we get to play with. So now we're gonna need to decide what do we want the outside box, the very first impression that your recipient is going to have when they look at the box. This is what the gift box is gonna look like. Think of this as picking out your wrapping paper. Which, which paper do we like? Oh, look at all these beautiful shades of blue. This is just going to be an amazing box and really um, gender neutral. So we can use this for a lot of different people in our lives. I am just really, really drawn to this, this one. So that's what I'm going to start with. Okay. So what we need to do first is cut the paper to size. And how do we know what size to cut the paper? Well, this chart on our tool tells us. So what we need to do is make the biggest box possible, XXL. And that means we need a, see it says paper, a 12 by 12, that's 12 inch by 12 inch piece of paper. This paper is almost there, but just has this little lip. So let's go ahead and bring in our trimmer and cut away that little extra bit right there. Okay, so now we have our 12 by 12 paper. And now we're going to make the base of our, we're going to make the box. So when we, I'm going to give you a close up of this tool. We are making an extra, extra large box. So you see this bracket? Each of these um, sizes is pointing to a score line. All right. So what we're going to do for the extra, extra large box is to put this in and seat it right up into this corner. There's a raised edge on each. So just seat it right into that corner. Find the size box you're making. We're making the largest, extra, extra large. Use the tool that comes with the explosion board and just settle that in that groove and just drag it all the way down the tool, the entire length. And we have just created an impressed score line. Now before moving this, let's look over here. Right here, there is a petal shape with a dash, dash, dash. That is another score line and we need to take that from the corner all the way to where we to our score. Okay, a little hard to see on a pattern paper, but I've scored it here and here. Now we're going to turn it 90 degrees, 
and repeat those exact same measurements. Extra, extra large, we drag that bone folder up and down that score, and then we do the corner score from corner to that line. Turn it 90 degrees and repeat. And then one more time so that we have done it four times and we are scored on four, all four sides and all four corners have been scored. Let's turn it over just to see if you can, I don't know if it, you can kind of see the score lines. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and fold on those score lines. This tool can help you to press each crease. So fold and then unfold each one folding it so that the side of the paper that you want to be the outside is on the bottom. Okay. Then we need to uh, score these diagonal lines. So what I like to do is put it, put it face to side, or the pretty side down. And then I want this one to score. So I'm just going to bring this up like that. See how it folds in out itself. And we want this to fold to the inside and I'm just gonna rub my bone fold on there and make that a nice crisp piece so just kind of fold it over and then push this piece back and we're just gonna repeat that on all four sides and see how it's starting to form into a box shape as we do that okay so if I if I gather like you're gathering your hair for a ponytail i'm going to gather all these sides and squeeze them together you can see how that's going to make a box shape now we don't want all these now it, we don't if you are just making a box what you would do is actually put glue on all of these in all of these corners and glue this so that it stays in this position creating our box if that's all you wanted was a box that's what you would do but we want ours to explode open, so we are not gonna glue any of that. Okay, how does the box stay together then? It's going to stay together by the lid. So let's go ahead and make a lid. Bring back our explosion board. And we look at our chart on the board itself and we have a lid chart. We just used the box chart in extra, extra large. So now we're gonna use the lid chart in extra, extra large. And it's telling us that we need to start with a six and a half inch by six and a half inch piece of paper. So now we need to go back to our, our pile of papers. And remember, this is what the outside of our box looks like. And we need to choose one of these to be our lid. So obviously, like I said in the beginning, when you use a collection pack, they all coordinate, so you can't mess up. Now, if you happen to have in your stash some solid color cardstock that you would prefer to use with this, go for it. But cardstock or double-sided paper is what you need. So... Remember these are double sided so we can turn this over. So we need our paper trimmer and we need to trim this paper down to six and a half inches by six and a half inches. Okay, we have our six and a half by six and a half. And we're, we are making a lid, right? So if we look up here again on this chart, the lid score is right here. This lid score line is the same no matter what size box you're making. This tool is so well thought out, I just absolutely love it. Okay, now to make this one, it's the same kind of idea. We find the score line we need, which in this case is the lid, and we just drag it down. And then we go in that corner, find that corner, and just score it to that line, to that line that you just had scored. Turn it 90 degrees. And score, lid score, corner score, 90 degrees, lid score, corner score. One more time, lid score, and corner score. Now this measurement for the lid never changes, but the measurement of the size paper changes. So this is making the biggest lid possible for the biggest box possible, but you can make smaller and smaller pieces of paper making even though your lid measurement, your lid score line is the same, it will make smaller and smaller lids depending on what size box you're making. Okay, now we're gonna fold this guy in the same manner. I'm gonna have this blue plaid on the outside. So I'm folding it in that manner. 
And then we're gonna repeat that, that idea with the corners. So I just like to fold it in and then use my tool to help me score. So let's bring in our score tape. And what I like about score tape is that you can um, tear this by hand. You don't have to have, you do not have to use scissors. If you do use scissors, using a Teflon coated scissor, such as the Tim Holtz ones that I'm using here, um, are just make your process a little bit easier because your glue isn't gonna stick. But what I love about this, this tape is that you don't need to have you don't need to you, you don't need <laughs> pardon me you don't need to cut it okay so where the glue is going to go first of all inside of each of these triangles we need to glue those shut so i'm just going to put some tape across that and when i fold that that will hold that triangle together and then i'll be putting one more piece of paper or tape on one, one side of these flaps and close that down. So let me do that now so you can see. I'll put it on this side of the flap. All right, and then we just kind of pinch that shut. And now that corner is done. Now we're just gonna repeat that process on the other three corners. I like to do the inside part first, and then that little flap. Now, if you're making boxes, um, you would have glued this, the all these little guys, um, all of these flaps, just the same exact way as we did the lid. If you wanted this to be a box and stay a box. If with an explosion box, the bottom layer doesn't need any glue, only your lid does. So our lid's done. Let's see what she looks like. So gather this kind of like a ponytail, okay? And then use the lid and put it over the whole thing. Now our box is complete. This is what she looks like. Turned out really cute with those that color combination. So this is what the outside of the box will look like, our explosion box, and when we lift the lid, we will add more layers in here and this will just sort of explode open as a, as a surprise. So this portion is done and we're gonna move on. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on just to save me some space. And we'll set that aside. Okay, so next we're gonna make a layer to go onto the inside of that box. So our box, if you remember, was 12 by 12. So the next size we're gonna make is 11 by 11. Now you can make all of these layers, which is would be one, two, three, four, five, six additional layers on the inside. I don't think we'll do that many, but we'll probably do about four. But I do wanna go ahead and start with 11 by 11. So I'm gonna go back to my pile of papers that we previously looked at and pick out what do I want for that first layer. So we'll start with this light blue. Okay, and for this one, we need it to be 11 by 11. So we'll trim our paper to 11 by 11. Saving my scrap for paper for card making or something else, or possibly even embellishments for this project. Okay, and let's go ahead and go ahead and trim the rest of our papers while we're here. So we have an 11 by 11, let's go do a 10 by 10. Ten by ten, and then let's go ahead and do a nine by nine as well. Um I really for sure want to get this one in there. I just think that pattern is so cool. Okay, 11 by 11, 10 by 10, 9 by 9. We'll start with the bigger one, biggest one, the 11 by 11. And if we look on our chart, 11 by 11 equals extra large. So up here, extra large is the second from the outside score. So we place, just like the box, we place this inside. We go to the size, coordinating size, which is extra large, and we drag our score tool down that, and then we do the corner. And then repeat that 
So turn 90 degrees, extra large, and score, and extra large, and score, and one last time. Extra large, and score. Now other than the size of the paper and which, which little um, score line I put this in, this process was exactly the same as making of the box, wasn't it? So this is how you would make another size box if that's what you wanted to do. We're gonna actually turn this into a page and I want, or a part of the explosion box, and I want this one to have um, the petal shape on the outside. So that's when we're gonna go in and bring in our heart stencils that are part of the explosion board tool. And I just need to find the one that is the same size measurement, which is this one, the extra large. And I'm gonna need my pencil. What I'm gonna do is place the corner of this heart stencil into the, this corner, this right exact point where all my score lines came together. And then I'm gonna use my pencil. I'm gonna do this kind of dark so that you can see it, but you would just do a light hand. I'm just gonna trace that petal shape. Repeat that on all four sides. Then you're gonna take scissors and just cut away each of those. So we go down the score line and then we're just gonna follow the pencil markings and you just cut away all of that. So we'll be left with this shape that has this sort of these sort of hearts or petal shapes on the four corners. Okay, so we have all four sides cut out, and I just want to now go in and fold these on the scored lines. and scoring it again, just like the box. Think about what side you want facing up. And then these heart pieces get scored, folded in. Just giving them, I'm just squeezing them a little bit with my fingers here, but you could use your score tool to help you with that. Okay, let's bring back our box, open the lid, let this fall open. And I just, we're not gonna glue this yet. I just wanna give you the visual. This is gonna nest right in here like this because it was we started with a smaller piece of paper. You see how it is nested down. It's a little bit smaller than the outside. And these score lines are all lined up with each other so that when we go to close the box, these layers are all gonna fold in to, with each other, all right? Okay, so we're gonna put the lid on that and we'll go work on our next layer cut okay. so this one is 10 by 10 and for this one we are only going to score the the measurement size we're not going to do any of the corners so for this one 10 by 10 is large so we look we see this in the corner make sure it's in there straight look for the large score and just pull that down give it a 90 degree turn and repeat large okay and give it a 90 degree turn do the large score and one last time and do the large score okay let's go ahead and fold this on all of those scored lines okay now the reason I did not score the corners is because we're going to create um, some pockets. And so this is where you're gonna bring in your ruler. And if you're going to be using scissors, a pencil. If you're gonna use your cutting blade or an X-Acto knife, you need a mat that you can cut on. So what we're gonna do See if I can, I'm gonna show you on this side. I think you might be able to see the scores a little bit better. So this, so what's gonna happen is 
we're gonna make this center piece here and this center piece, the two with the blue snowflakes on them, the inside of a pocket. Okay, so what we wanna do is cut away from this top corner to this score. So from sc this score to this score, we're essentially cutting away a triangle. So if you're gonna use a, your scissors, you would draw with a pencil and then trim that away. Or if you're using an X-Acto knife or a finger knife, like I am, you can save yourself a step with that pencil and just make this make quick work of this. So we're gonna cut away that. And then the piece exactly opposite that, we want to repeat that process. So from the top, from this top of this score line to this score line. And we are gonna trim away that triangle piece. I was doing it kind of upside down so I didn't push as hard. <laughs> There we go. Okay. So these are going to get folded in, but we need to slice them right here too. So right along this score line, we are going to slice that. Now you could just simply use your scissors. You don't even need a pencil or a ruler and just cut on that score line from this line to there. Or you can use your X-Acto knife or your finger knife and trim. So nothing gets cut off it just gets folded so that's gonna go in like that and we're gonna repeat it on this side right on that scored line that you created okay so when folded in this now will create a pocket and that's gonna be something that I can then stick a little gift card in or a photo or a letter or a small gift. So this will need a small amount of glue right here. This is again why we have the super skinny tape because it won't impede the, um, the pocket. Now what I want to do, I want my pocket to be sealed at the bottom so that whatever I put in doesn't slide out. What I'm gonna do is put some tape right above the scored line also known as the bottom of your pocket okay and then you just burnish that on and then you pull off the, the paper backing and I'm gonna close one of these before I close it here's a little tip put two fingers inside the pocket and close it this will this will help create the pocket shape okay and then we just gonna need to put a little bit of tape on this one the side of the flap So your pocket will be slightly narrower about the width of your tape will be slightly narrower than um, or less or shallower I guess is a better word not narrower but shallower okay by keeping my fingers in there see how it, how it stayed puffed instead of super flat it just makes it easier to slide stuff in you're just gonna put a gift card in there that won't be a problem anyway now I want to match that with this side so we're gonna do the exact same thing on this side. We just need to trim away those corners. Now let's see what that's going to look like in our box. Open this up. See how it's already starting to explode open? <laughs> so this is going to be our next layer. And this can lay in this way or this way, whatever we like. And it's a little smaller than 
the one that went before it. We're not gonna glue it down yet. We'll wait till the end to glue. But now you can kind of see, and you can just you can choose if you want it this way or this way. Okay, and then this is still gonna all fold up. Gather it like a ponytail, kind of. Put your lid on. Perfect. All right, next size down. We did a nine by nine. That was this really cool paper that is dark plaid on this side and the wood grain on this side. We are going to, once again, score it. Now this one is known as the medium size. So we're just gonna do the medium score line on all four sides. Okay, so now with this nine by nine sheet that we have pre-scored on the medium size, we're gonna do something a little bit different. Instead of making pockets, we're gonna make gatefold pockets, if you will, <laughs> um, enclosures on, on two sides. So to do that, we are gonna take the edge of your paper and instead of lining it up all the way here, I'm gonna line it up with the lid line, the line, the lid measurement line. And we did a medium, so we're gonna go down one size to small, and we're gonna score down to that first score line, skip the middle, and then, so I'm not pushing when I do this here, I want the small size score right there. This might, this will help me, I think, find it. It's this, okay, it's the score line right here. We just want to go score this box and this box, and then we're gonna turn it 180 degrees and do the opposite side and do the same, the small. We're going one size down from the uh, size of the, of the paper. So if you were doing this on a small piece of paper, you would do the extra, extra small, for example. Okay, so you kind of can see the score line here that we just did, and it was skipped here, and then we have it again. What we want to do is cut away those outside edges to the scored line. So we're going to cut on the score, on this score, the cross score, and then this piece we're cutting off. You could do this with your scissors or with your craft knife. And then we're going to repeat that on the opposite side. Okay, and now these, we actually want these this cut to go all the way to the middle. And what that does, think of it like shutters. Okay, so these are going to then fold in like little shutters. So we need to repeat that process on this, on the opposite side, always the opposite. Okay. And you could reveal like a little photo there or a little message or whatever. Now, if you want these to be closed with some twine, or something like that. If you have that, you could do that. Let me just show you how. Now, if you have a ribbon, you could also do the same thing. I'm gonna give myself, I don't know, 18 inches or so, 15 inches or so. And you could simply wrap this around the outside and tie a little bow. If you have um, the We Are Memory Keepers uh, crop a dial, you could cut, you could punch a couple of little holes and put some eyelets in here would be another way you could enclose this. Um, I'm using twine just because it's really thin and narrow and easy to manipulate and super affordable. But you could use ribbon in place of this if you wanted to. Or this particular um, paper would look really cute with like some jute or something as well. So you could have it enclosed like that. Now if you do ribbon, what you might do, let me see if I have some here. I don't have the best coordinating color, but just to show you, what you might do is if you did ribbon, is put a little bit of adhesive right here and then lay it down so that your ribbon was always glued this much. And then you could just tie this part. I'm not gonna do ribbon, but I just wanted you to see that that was an option. You don't have to have, a clo have it closed at all. You could just have little flaps. Okay, so let's bring back our box, open that up, 
pockets. Look at how it's just floating open. Okay, and then this layer, we already have pockets here, so we don't want these this way. We want to swap it out, and we'll go that direction. Okay, now you can continue doing layers if you want, following the box here. We had two more, three more sizes we could do. But I think what I want is a little box inside of the box, a fun little gift to go on the inside. So before I glue any of this down, I'm going to close this up one more time. And let's make a little tiny gift box to go on the inside. So let's make our teeny tiny box. We go, we refer back to our explosion board. And remember, these are the box sizes up here. We want to make the smallest box possible, extra, extra small. So we go to our box chart, look for extra, extra small, and it tells you what size paper to start with. A six inch by six inch is what we need. I'm thinking I want to do this paper with the dark blue on the outside and then the white on the inside. So I'm just going to trim this to six by six. And then using our board, we are going to, we're making the box itself. So we are going to go extra, extra small on that little score. And this time we do want the corners. The corners are key to making a box or a lid. Extra, extra small, corner, corner. <laughs> extra, extra small corner and one last time extra extra small and corner now this is the tiniest box that you can make it's gonna make a little tiny box this is gonna be fun to put like a little co uh, hot cocoa bomb as I said before in some sort of saran wrap or something of course um, you can put candies in here or a small trinket or gift and we want to do each of the corners as well I love how it just kind of starts uh, making itself <laughs> once you get to the corners. It just like wants to be a box. Okay, now this one, unlike the big box, this one I want to be a box. It's not gonna flop open. So we need to glue all these pieces down. So we're gonna get our score tape again. And we will use it to close up each side. So we're gonna put glue there, close the triangle, and then we wanna put some on the inside too. I accidentally have a little extra glue facing this direction, so I'm just gonna close my flap that way. That'll take care of that excess glue. So here, close that up. Um, here I love that it's sort of a repeating design so while the while the sizes might are gonna change on you um, the process does not so it makes it easy to just sort of repeat for all the way from the cutting of the square size papers to using the same score line four times over, doing the same thing opposites. It makes everything faster and easier when you're simply just repeating the process. Okay, there's our tiny little box and we are gonna need a lid for that. So we look at our lid chart here, extra, extra small lid for an extra, extra small box starts with a four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Now I could use some of the paper I haven't cut yet, but I can refer back to my pile of scraps because I'm certain I've got some paper that's that large. I think it'd be fun to have a lid that's the same as the lid on the bit on the big one. So I'm gonna use this plaid. This is the tiniest little thing that you're gonna make on this board. Okay, for this one, just like the big one, we use the lid measurement. So we seek this all the way in the corner and we use the lid measurement. The lid score line is the same on every single box size and we also need the corner. Turn it 90 degrees and repeat. Turn it 90 degrees and repeat. And one last time. Okay, and we're gonna fold this up on all the little score lines. And we are gonna go ahead and glue our lid all these little pieces in so that 
our lid will be what will close this box. All right, and when we have our lid finished, and it's just going to fit right on top of our little tiny box. And that's what that one looks like. So cute side by side with a big one. All right. Now, let's set this aside here. I'm gonna return my bone folder so I don't lose it, and or my score tool. And then I'm also gonna go ahead and put the heart templates back on here. So our explosion board tool is ready to go the next time. Now let's finish putting this together. So we're gonna go ahead and glue everything down now. So I'm gonna take my first layer and I wanna put adhesive only on this square. Now I definitely like using score tape because it is so strong and this is such a fun project to give and to get. And I promise you the person that gets it is going to play with it a lot and probably show it off to their friends. Take it to work and show everybody what, what they made, what you made for them. And so I like to use a lot of adhesive because uh, people like to, something that's this impressive, people will pick at it. <laughs> it's like, this is homemade, what, really? How do they do that? And they'll want to investigate it. So I like to just make sure that it is gonna be glued down tight. Okay, once you have a glue on the, just the center portion, it's only right here, we are gonna glue it in place. Now, once the tape touches paper, it, that's where it lives. So be careful and plan ahead. We just need this to be centered as best as we can. Right, like that. All right. Then take your next largest piece, which is in this case is this one with these pockets. And we're gonna do the same thing, put adhesive only on the center square. Folds to be opposite of those pockets. Centering this again. Okay, so this is all glued together now and this is gonna live right inside of here. Now you can decorate it, you can pull papers from our leftover pieces. Um, if you remember, we had a bunch of papers that we didn't, we didn't use at all that were cut apart. Let's see, I really liked the one that had this small, it's this one. And also this one has some cute stuff. So let's cut those papers up, let's set this aside. Okay, so I have a few papers cut apart, I have a few of those. And don't forget, we also have the coordinating sticker sheet. So we can choose pieces from this to decorate with. I think this one is gonna be perfect. Yeah, see how these little squares are gonna fit just perfectly on there? I think I'll do that snow much fun one. It's pretty cute. So we'll go ahead and glue that on there. But see that just kind of finishes that little box off and I think I'm gonna put I have these little candies that I can kind of pile in there <laughs> just kind of a fun little surprise okay and then on each on these flaps you could put a photo here you could put something you've made well maybe we'll put some of these little embellishments on there little Maybe I'll take a couple of these snowflake stickers and kind of add those here and there. That's cute. Maybe on this one we won't, we'll just do a whole sticker. I like this cup of cocoa. See how everything perfectly coordinates? It's so cool. On the inside of these flaps, we could you could slide in a gift card, a photo, a message. I like this message right here. That's really cute. This one 
You don't have to tie it if you don't want to. Oh, this little, this little guy is so cute. Now I could even enhance these and put a little bit of glitter on there if I wanted to. So those elements are done. And then maybe with my pockets here, I'll just slide in gift cards there. That's kind of cute, right? And you can continue to decorate this as much as you wanted to. And then when you're ready to close everything up, your little box will fit right in there. You just gotta close these flaps around it. Again, it's a lot like gathering hair for a ponytail. <laughs> there we go. Everything's inside. And we're just gonna cover that up with our lid. Now you could add a bow on here. We could add some of our some of these other sentiments. This paper is actually really cute, I think, because it coordinates with my box. I'm gonna just fold it in half and make it like a little two from tag. I think that would be really cute. And then we could tie that on. We could punch a little hole here and tie it on with some of that twine. We could add this sticker is perfect. Look at this big, giant floral. It matches our paper. I like can use that in place of a bow. I can even stick it on something like that. And then right in here, we can write our little to from. And there we go. That is a beautiful, fun project box. Let's see how it works. Open it up. And look at that, all that fun, all these fun interactive pieces, the gift cards, you could put in these, you can make another sheet or more multiple sheets with pockets and slide in like a bracelet. Um, cold hard cash works too. <laughs> um, whatever you want to give, a little note, you know, you could put a small gift in here. I like the candies. You could put thin candies in pockets if you wanted to or under the flaps as well. You have multiple things. Add some sparkly paper. I think there's a silver glittery paper that would look really pretty as some elements in here. And then just gather everything up and put a lid on it. So fun. I hope you create several of these. Once you get started, it's hard to stop. Thank you for joining me. Have fun crafting.